And our guests now are Bob Blackburn, an old partner of mine that used to ride fence together a long time ago. And Jeff Moore is here. Now, Jeff, you're going to be hearing his name a lot. because, And they're both here, actually, to fill us in on OK Clock. Guys, good to have you. Well, thank you, Sam, for and having us. I must say, I feel like I'm looking at a fitness ad here. <laughs> How many pounds lost between the two of you? <laughs> Jeff? Couple, couple of decades. <laughs> <laughs> Holy Toledo, and you've lost weight too. A little bit, I have. All right. For noticing. My doctor would love both of you. <laughs> We're here today to talk about OK Pops. Who can tell me first about where the idea came from? Let me start deep background. I've been at the Oklahoma Historical Society now uh, 38 years. So approaching 40, 28 of those as an administrator. And when I became deputy director in charge of programs and really setting the direction for the Oklahoma Historical Society, wanted to accomplish several things. We wanted more diversity. You know, it wasn't gonna be just a society for old white guys. It was gonna be women, it was gonna be minorities, it was gonna be the diversity that reflects Oklahoma. And then secondly, there was one market that we did not serve very well, Tulsa. We had no museums in Tulsa. We would go in, rush in with a program and rush out and nothing sustainable. So we wanted a place in Tulsa. And along comes 2007. Uh, the History Center is open. We had achieved that $62 million investment. Jeff, one of the young employees, uh, hired him right out of college before that to help with the Route 66 Museum. He and his buddy Larry O'Dell came to me and said, Bob, we need to do an exhibit on the history of rock and roll. And uh, that started this entire conversation. And so Jeff and Larry did that, then exhibits on Oklahomans in the movies, Oklahomans in the cartoon industry, Oklahomans in television and radio. And it just grew until we said, we need a, a museum in Tulsa dedicated mm -hmm. to that. Pick it up there. Yeah, I mean, this is exactly what Bob said. And it was, it's kind of an organic process. And we had this idea and then we realized Larry and I realized we didn't have the collections. So that put us on a track of really actively identifying collections and, and scouring really the country to bring these cultural resources back to Oklahoma. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the collections that have come in from these household names have come from out of state. And so that's one of the exciting things about the project is we had an opportunity to bring the collections of Leon Russell and Bob Wills and Patty Page and, and, and bring them back to Oklahoma because all of those collections were out of state. And so it's an opportunity to share this Oklahoma story with the people of the state. Correct me if I'm wrong, isn't it going to be located across from Kane's Ballroom? Yes, sir. So that means that you're liable to see a few ghosts if you leave the place at night. You might see Bob and Leon and some of the boys, mm -hmm. Al Strickland and all, walk out front to get in the car to leave after playing a gig and you guys are closing up shop and all the memorabilia concerning Bob Wills and the Texas Playboys and they're just going home. Well, we know where they will be going because we will have the Bob Wills' last traveling bus on display on the ground floor. No so as you're walking down Main Street, you'll be right by the bus across from Canes as if they were going to get on and go to their next gig on Route 66. Wow. You know, that rascal used to play my hometown, Fort Smith, Arkansas. Uh, there was a place over there, a loft dance floor, right in the center of a place called Texas Road where it intersects the main drag mm -hmm. of, of Fort Smith cross the bridge and there you are. And my dad used to talk about him coming to, to Fort Smith to play and the whole, virtually the whole town would turn out. Mm -hmm. And it was that way all over the country, anywhere he went. What else is gonna be there? Well, we've got the, an amazing collection on Leon Russell, another Tulson. Yeah. And uh, there's, there's recordings that he, he made in, in Oklahoma. Um, we've got photo collections regarding his, his career going back to the 1950s to all that session work he did in California with Phil Spector and the Beach Boys and Frank Sinatra. And I mean, just, I mean, it's a, it's a who's who mm -hmm. of yeah. pop music that Leon played with in the, in the 60s and 70s. And, and uh, so we'll really be able to tell the stories of Oklahoma as a state, and then also specifically Tulsa and, and, and that Northeast Oklahoma story 
And, and being across from Canes kind of grounds us you bet in a lot does. of ways yeah. because Canes Ballroom not only was significant because of Bob Wills, but it was also significant to Leon Russell and Chuck Blackwell and Jimmy Markham, those guys who played with Jerry Lee Lewis because they saw him at Canes and he needed a band to go on tour with and they picked these guys from Tulsa because they knew what they were doing and that I think inspired them, gave them that spark that said, hey, we can do this and, and led to them going to California and, and uh, the rest is history. I got to inject something here that I don't know, you don't hear this talk about much, but he was the kind of man that, that if he got a call, let's say, from the Beach Boys and they'd say, hey man, we need a piano player for da 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 da. Most guys would step in and say, well, you know, yeah, I can do that. But he wouldn't do it if that wasn't the way he played or he couldn't give 110%. And he'd tell them, no, I'm not the right one. Who you need to get is somebody else. And he turned down a lot of money, but he had that kind of character. Mm -hmm. And people respected him for that. People don't realize Leon Russell was just a lot more than a piano pounder. He was a gifted musician, mm -hmm. but he knew his limitations. Mm -hmm. But he had character. I, I, I will always remember him for that. One, one object that I, I like, and one of my favorites, because I was a fan. You know, it's funny, you're around some of these celebrities, and you're a fan for years, and suddenly now they're friends. Well, Mary Kay Place is one of those mm -hmm. that I consider a friend now. Well, early on, we wanted to do something on Mary Kay, and we asked her, what objects would you have from your career? And, you know, she left Tulsa University, drove to L.A. in her Volkswagen bug, got a job as a secretary, was taking notes uh, for some of these TV shows being written, ended up writing a script for All in the Family. And then one day there was a, some part where someone needed to sing. She said, well, I can sing. Well, that was the creation of her role in Mary Hartman, Mary Hartman as Loretta Hager, the no country kidding. and western singer from Oklahoma. Yeah. She gave us the outfit that she wore on the TV show. When they took her photograph for her album, she was in that, it was nominated for a Grammy. She also gave us a sweater set from her role in The Big Chill. So two of those iconic moments in her life, she says, yes, you can have them. That generosity, it reflects Mary Kay Place and her parents, her, her mm -hmm. dad was an art teacher at Will Rogers High School, Tulsa University. Uh, the generosity of of people in the industry has constantly amazes me. And we've only scratched the surface. Now, are, will OK Pops branch out to include sports as well? Or is this primarily music and, and writing and that sort of thing? Well, ab absolutely. In American culture, sports, you know, goes across to popular culture. So you have a lot of, uh, you know, Mickey Mantle is one of those people that really supersedes what he ever did on the on the on the baseball diamond. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, the, the Oklahoma City Thunder. That's a big big part of the Oklahoma story in the 21st century, and it's absolutely had a huge. Im the NBA and basketball and sports like that have had a huge influence on film and, and music and, and uh, fashion. Russell Westbrook has his own fashion line. So yeah, we'll, we'll deal with sports, not so much from wins and losses or statistics, sure. but how those you know, transcend other, other media and television and film. And well, while I'm thinking of it, you're gonna have to plug in Walter Cronkite. Yes, sir. Because Cronkite broadcasts from here and broke some new earth doing it, mm -hmm. the way he kept notes. It was amazing, I, you know, he'd have a loop of crowd noise and he'd make a list of the folks that were going to be there, and he was getting uh, the, the scores in on a ticker. So he'd do the ticker, and oh, there's Doc Burns down there. Hello, Doc. He was the one that pioneered that that method of, of, of you know of broadcasting. Mm -hmm. uh, but there were so many other gifted bro broadcasters that came through here, uh, and people got their start here. Gosh, man, you're going to need a big building, or as they said in Jaws. You're going to need a bigger building. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, Bob Dotson was with us two weeks ago at the History Center. Bob really? Dotson had that 20 some years on the Today Show. Uh, his collections are available, and he'll oh. come back. Anytime we want Bob Dotson to come back, he will. Jim Hartz is coming back to Claremore on November the 1st for a I'd fundraiser at the him. Memorial. Sure. He was chairman for years, and his broadcast career, he was anchor on NBC uh, television. So, you know, those kind of broadcasters uh, want to help as well. Thank you both. 
Will you come back? Uh, you're not going to be with the Historical Society much longer, are you? A couple you? more years. But well, after I've that? I've extended. Then hopefully retirement, go fishing. grandbabies. Well, let's get both of you in, and let's, as this thing comes together, show pictures, talk more about it. Keep folks up to, up to date on it, okay? Very good. We Absolutely. will do that. Thank you, well, Sam, for your no, help. Thank you, guys. We appreciate what you're doing, actually, more than you know. All right. Still to come, where do you get your news and who do you trust? And this ain't a game show. This and more when we come back.